Greetings and salutations, all. I.S. Anderson here once again, and it's that time again, as you've just seen. And today I'm going to be getting back into Greek mythology. I know I haven't done a mythology time in a while, and it's been even longer since I've done Greek mythology, but here it is. Today I'm going to tell a very simple story, although I think probably one of the most comedic stories, if not gruesome and also a bit mind-harrowing. I'm going to talk to you today about the Caledonian boar hunt. Now this story, as you probably have guessed, takes place in the land of Caledonia. Yes, it's part of Greece. And it centers around mainly the king of that region at the time, Oneus. Now back in ancient Greece, it was customary to make a small sacrifice to each of the gods after a very large harvest, particularly to Dionysus and Demeter, of course. Now, this story kind of starts when, you know, King Oneus, I mean, they have a large harvest, of course, you know, in the fall, and he makes a sacrifice to each and every one of the gods except Artemis. Now, I've read several accounts of this story, and whether or not Oneus did this accidentally or he did it intentionally is fairly unclear. Um, you know, there's the motive is never really, usually never brought up. But, as you may have guessed, Artemis was definitely not pleased that she did not get her cut. Now, those of you who have seen my video on Artemis know that she tends to not take things very well when she feels she's slighted. I mean, she kills people for attempting to rape her. She kills people for thinking about raping her. They, she kills people for accidentally coming across her while she's bathing in the river. So, as you can imagine, when she... She is slighted in this way. She doesn't behave so rationally. What does she do? Well, she just figures, okay, you want to play it that way? I am going to sick this in, in monstrously large boar to ravage your countryside. Now, that might seem silly, sending out a boar, you know, an uh, animal that humans eat in order to do devastating things, but... In truth, this boar turned out to be a lot more dangerous and a lot more vicious than the average boar. Even more dangerous than the one that killed King Robert. Hakuna Matata, bitch! Ah! So this boar starts running around, causing chaos. It kills people, and apparently it starts burning their fields. How it pulls that off, I have no idea. And so everybody inside the kingdom decides to run back into their city and close the doors and hide behind their walls. Which wouldn't have been too big a deal, for the, not for the fact that they had forgot to bring the food stores in before they did that. So eventually they started to starve. So naturally King Oneus decides, well, if this boar is going to go around tear everything up, I've got to kill it. And so he sends out messages to the far reaches of the world and he sends out a summons to all heroes in the area, anybody who can get his message to come and hunt this boar for them and kill it. And he said he would reward the hunter with the pelt and its tusks, which I think pretty much would have been a given because anybody who killed the thing could have just skinned it themselves anyway. But anyway, um, you know, he sends out, he hopes to get, you know, some really a good band of heroes and all that stuff, or at least one demigod to come and slay this thing, but... What he ends up getting is probably one of the largest group of buffoons in Greek mythology history. Now, this hunt goes on for about six days, and during that six days, a lot of these hunters are killed. And not all of them are killed by the boar. A lot of the hunters are actually ended up killed by the other hunters, either out of just missing with their arrows, or sometimes they would want to kill each other so that they wouldn't have to so that they would have less competition for the prize. There was a story about one hunter who actually turned on the, somebody who sponsored him or somebody who mentored him actually coming there and he did this because he didn't want to share the prize with him. Now keep in mind, remember, the prize here is the beast's pelt and its tusks. Yeah, not exactly something I would be so... <laughs> gung-ho to kill over, but apparently, I guess, this pelt would show that, you know, would be a true badge of honor for some reason. But probably the biggest fly in the ointment here would be the arrival of the warrior woman, Atlanta. Now, Atlanta, she was an avid hunter herself, and she was a very athletic woman. She was known for being very fast runner and all that stuff. 
She actually had many suitors, despite the fact that she was described as having a face of not quite so maidenish as to be a boy, but a little bit too boyish to be considered a maiden. You had to figure, though, she must have been a very athletic person if she could run that fast. So, she probably had a very athletic build. Now, it's said that, you know, in order for her to agree to marry someone, he would have to beat her in a foot race. And apparently a lot of men challenged her to a foot race, despite the fact that they probably would lose to her. Now, uh, another little tidbit that may, you may find interesting is that back in the Greek days, at least when they, when they first invented the Olympics, the athletes would uh, compete all completely naked. So I'm guessing maybe a lot of those challenges she got were just opportunities for other people to see her naked. So finally, on the sixth day of the hunt, the Caledonian board actually gets wounded. Somebody actually draws first blood on it. And guess who that is? Atlanta. She shoots it with a bow. All the other hunters manage to corner it in a small space, and then there's this big, huge, epic battle. A lot of hunters die, you know, getting impaled on the boar's tusks, and a lot of them end up getting shot by the other hunters, mostly because of bad aim. Finally, the king's own son, Malagar, manages to kill the boar with his spear. So everybody's rejoicing, yay, we finally got it. Most of the people are dead at this point, and Malagar skins the beast, takes its tusk, but he decides, you know what? I'm going to give the prizes to Atlanta. Now, of course, the other men in the hunt are not happy about this. They didn't want Atlanta to be there in the first place. But now she gets the prize just because she drew first blood, but she didn't actually get to kill it. In fact, Malegar's own uncles were probably the most outspoken critics of it. I mean, they taunted him and they ridiculed him for it. And in some versions of the story, they kind of say to him, well, wait till your wife hears about this. And Malagar does not take that so well. <laughs> Personally, I would have just told the uncles to step off, but then again, that's just me. Now might be a good time to mention a little backstory about Malagar. When he was born, the three fates actually came to his mother with a stick of wood and told her that that when this you know stick of wood you know finished burning up, that her son would die, and they throw it into the fire. Well, she actually rushes into the fire, gets it puts it out, and then she takes this, you know, piece of wood and stores it away in her, in her trunk, essentially assuring that he will never die. When she finds out about Malagar killing her two brothers, she's not happy about it. So she goes and finds the piece of wood and throws it into the fire, and Malagar ends up dying. <laughs> and she, then she becomes so grief-stricken by it that she, in turn, kills herself. And it's at that point that Artemis is avenged for her not getting her cut at the sacrifice from the harvest. So one might think, well, what exactly was the moral of this story? What message were the creators of this story trying to convey to people who would read it, at least at the time? It's kind of hard to piece it together, you know, thousands of years later. Could have been simply, you know, don't be greed. It could have been simply, you know, don't make sure that you pay the gods their tribute that you're supposed to. Um, don't let... Don't let your feelings about women cloud your judgment and all that stuff. Personally, I just take it as, well, think before you act. And that is the Caledonian Boar Hunt. Hope you enjoyed that. And as always, you know, my pertinent contact information will be down below in the abyss, as always. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe. You know the drill. And until next time, this is I.S. Anderson telling everybody, make your lives grand and have a good day. Thank you very much.